Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back to CCLP4. I'm feeling a little on the uh, under the weather side of things tonight, but I'm going to see if we can finish strong here with the final episode of this Let's Play. Starting with this level gimmick aisle. Okay, so there is clearly a lot of stuff going on in this level. Um, and this level is basically a giant sort of series of gotchas. And... Uh, Obviously, we don't want to open that, because then our path to the exit is going to be blocked. That way is blocked, so it looks like our only way is to go over here. No harm in going through the uh, thief. Okay, we're going to need some blocks before we can make that work. So, uh, I guess let's go out here. Let's take the force forward, because we can go back through the recessed wall. And thankfully, there happens to be a tank button out there, which I guess you could see by going there. Alright, so... Oh boy. This looks scary. Um... I'm trying to remember how to do this, actually. So basically, we have to get this fireball. Um, oh, I, I remember how to do it. You do... Like that. So that should send the fireball through all the traps. Something blew up. Alright, so that's cool. Uh, let's not disrupt this. That doesn't. That seems to be all we can do here for now, and we can now get up here. I guess that cloned a glider. All right. So if we send this fireball through with that chip still intact there, we can have him destroy this bomb as well. So let's do that. Okay. So. We can now push that in, and we can now take those blocks over here, which is where we were wanting to get some blocks anyway. Now, one thing I should note is that there actually used to be um, a requirement in this level to uh, nail or create a nail with the blocks uh, with a fireball going across it while you got those fire boots, which is kind of a little extreme, so I'm kind of glad that's now not in the level anymore. Okay, so we're going to need a blue key if we're going to switch those tanks again, but thankfully we are about to get one, which is good, because I believe the entrance to that room is beyond... Yes, it is. Okay, good. I believe we can get that without any consequence either. What is down there? Do I want to go down? Okay, that's safe. I guess we can check that out. We can't go through there, uh, this thing on the left side, until we're, we get rid of the blue key, so that's going to be a bit of a problem. Okay, I don't know if I want to push that block yet, so let's just leave that alone for now. Okay, so we go up here. Uh, we shouldn't really need these blue walls anymore, so I'm just going to clear everything. Let's just get rid of all this stuff. And we should be okay. And now we can go in and press the button. Alright, so now we've got access to a new area. And this is tricky, because you might think that you want to get the chip there at this point, and then use the recessed wall to get out. But that is actually not correct. So don't do it. So that's actually one of the big cruxes of the whole level right there. Alright, so now that's cloning. Can't go back that way. Alright, but we can do this. We can go over here. I'm assuming we want to use the yellow key there. And it looks like we now have a bit more of a roadmap for what to do with this uh, block that we saw on the other side. We want to go through there, but we have to go through there after getting the green key, and we can only do that after pushing the block enough way that we've gone through the fire. So, not quite time for that yet. Uh, why don't we go ahead and do this? This should be, yeah, that should be okay to do. Alright, we need skates to get that chip. And we can see here we can get them right there. So I guess we're going to have to do that after we uh, take care of the block as well, and before we do the thief. So let's remember that. Okay. So that should be good to go. 
So all we should need to do here is just grab this chip. All right. So let me go ahead and lose the skates, go in here. I'm assuming that red key is connected to the exit, because that's where we saw a red door. And it seems to have something to do with that toggle button, which is connected to the exit, so... All right, so this block... We can't use it to blow up the bomb, but we can use it to send the fireball over. There we go. All right, now we've got something very interesting here. This looks like a block puzzle. All right, I have to do that move. I need four yellow keys, right? So I see one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's interesting. So apparently one of those either I don't need or it's supposed to be used for later. Okay, I think I see what we have to do here. We need to create a partial post by doing that. And then we go over here, and we put two on the top. And then that should enable us to get that last block. It's a very clever way to extract blocks. This is a level by Tyler Sontag, so of course it involves partial posting. Alright, there we go. Cool, so now... It should just be a matter of doing that. And that should be all four. So the yellow key down there was completely a red herring. I guess we can grab it. Although I don't think you actually need it. And now we can go back this way with the flippers. And this is why I didn't use that block earlier, because it turns out you can just get the chip right there. But uh, we need some suction boots. So let's see if we can find some of those. I'm going to have to press this guy again. There we go. So ultimately what we want to do is we want to use this block um, to go down here and block up the paramecium in here so it doesn't hit, or the uh, it doesn't go into this um, exit area. So, let's see, what where do we need to go next? We need to go down here. No, this way. There's water this way. I guess you could also get the um, um, the chip down here at this point as well. Okay, so we have to lose boots there. Kind of a little mean putting a bomb at the end of that, but oh well. At least there's enough space to get through that. Alright, so now we just need to leave the block here, come back around through the um, tank button area, and then go back down, and then use the ice slides, I guess, to maneuver the block around. Let's give that a shot. So now we use the recessed wall to go backwards across the fourth slide, which is really clever. I really like that a lot. And now we have to do this again. There's a lot of backtracking in this part. Okay, so now we got that in place. We should be good to go. this way. You don't actually need the suction boots here for the very end. Alright, so let's do... There we go. Alright, so let's leave it there. Uh, let's do that so that the paramecium has some breathing room. And the hint actually says, well, that socket didn't do much now, did it? But it does because it allows the paramecium to have some space while you do this. And now we can safely get the red key and go to the exit. So that's Gimmick Isle. Very tough level if you're playing it blind. Um, thankfully I wasn't, so it was a lot easier. I will say that um, this level is kind of an exception to the rule for me, because normally I'm not a big fan of these kind of gotcha levels, but this one, I guess for whatever reason, I think it was just the fact that each little challenge was really interesting. I found it fun every time I replayed it. But then again, I felt that same way about you can't teach an old frog new tricks, and a lot of people don't like that level, so I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> but I, I don't know, I just felt like the challenges in this level were a lot more reasonable than that one, and they just worked. Like, it, once you saw how they connected, and especially at the very end with a block, it's like, whoa, that's cool. So I'm glad it got in the set. I think it's pretty neat. Okay, Gravity Well, level by Jeffrey Barden. <sighs> So this is a really cool concept. You have to push this block through a force floor thing, and uh, 
Oh wait, no I can't go there. My bad. I know there's a way to do this without getting suction boots here at the beginning. Oh, we do this. There we go. Yeah, that's not right. We have to go to the left. So thankfully, if you mess up, you can go back through here and get suction boots and then redo it. So it's it's really simple in that regard. It seems like 148 is typically a slot for um, levels that involve a lot of execution. Or, excuse me, a lot of uh, uh, relief before the, uh, the final challenge, if you will. And I completely messed that up. Okay, this is going to involve some sidestepping. I really like this room, by the way. This room's cool. Oops. Ah. Let's go this way. Like, the way you have to get this block through is really neat. No! I was afraid that was going to happen. Oh well, you have to be really careful with that section. I got Gimmick Isle my first try, I couldn't get this level though. Ah! <laughs> oh man. Okay, let's try this again. But yeah, it seems like Jeffrey in particular likes doing these things where 146 is like the execution difficulty peak, and then 147 is like the puzzle difficulty peak, and then 148 is kind of like a reprieve before the final level. I like it. I, I think that's a neat way to do it. And I'm thinking about doing that in my own next set that I'm working on. But I kind of want to switch it up a little bit, though. Like, I kind of want to make 148 the difficulty peak, you know, do something a little different. Maybe make 149 a super easy level. But I don't know, there's just something cool about having 149 be that capstone of of everything that you've learned and all that, you know? I think that's really neat. Alright, this last room's really easy. You just have to go down, and uh, I think you have to go down. Uh, oh yeah, that's right, you go this way. I like the way this works out, especially with the blue walls. I think that's really neat. And then that one's fake, and then you go down here. So, just for reference, this is the optimal solution. Uh, so just so you can see it, it's 19 seconds long. Yeah, that took a while to pull off, but it was very satisfying to get it. All right, we are now at the final level of the set, guys. Mental Marvel Monastery, and this uses the walls of producing from CCLP3, and was designed by Josh Lee. Um, he entered this in the walls of CCLP3 create competition, and basically this is meant to be kind of a review level, if you want, showcasing different things from different official levels. It's like that first thing with the walkers, I guess that could be spirals maybe, and then this is uh, Learn from CCLP2 with the trap button and all that, and the teeth. I don't know what this is, if anything. This, maybe Misdirection from CC1? I have no idea. Um, this section kind of reminds me of Force Square. Uh... I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be, but that's what it reminds you of. And this is Mishmesh. The blocks over here look a lot like the blocks from Mining for Gold Keys from CCLP1. And then this is obviously Nuts and Bolts with the fireballs circling around a yellow key. So we're getting all kinds of yellow keys here. And this bit reminds me of Seeing Stars. Oh, there's where we're supposed to use all those yellow keys. Alright, this section, I think this is supposed to resemble, hmm, from CC LP2. Obviously we're supposed to take that fireball down there. And this is, I guess, blue blocks, maybe? 
I just love the fact that uh, Josh was able to fit all this in here. Like, that is an achievement. Mm. There we go. Okay, so new room. This is the... This looks like corridor, kind of. I think this is supposed to be corridor. First things first, though. How are we supposed to do anything here? I think... Oh, there we go. Alright, I'm going to have to sacrifice one of these, like the uh, the level this is based on. I guess two of them, technically. And we need to get a red key before we can push anything down there. Okay. And that's... We'll, we'll have to come back to that with the green key. So now we've got a glider area. I don't know what this is supposed to be based on. Worried yet? I know that hints from counterclockwise in CCLB2, but the gliders in that level were a lot more, I don't know, systematic, I guess is the word. They, they had a more, um, a, they had like more of a cyclical structure with, without the teleport, I guess. All right, so I think we're pretty good here. Let's go back through all this stuff. Oh, we can go down here now. Okay, this looks a lot like Frozen in Time with all the f walking on forest floors and fr Frozen Paramecia and all that stuff. Cool beans. And now we promptly get rid of our suction boots. Alright, so next stop we've got Fire Boot City up there. And we got another fireball, which is also in the spirit of, hmm. We also need to grab that at some point. I think I'm going to go ahead and just push that up so we can have more of a queer loop here for these three blocks. Okay, good. We only need three, so that's nice. All right, cool. So now we've got this. Get that ship. Go over here. And we should now be able to cross, not there, but go over here. And release this and get a toggle press out of it. There we go. And this is obviously meant to resemble toggle bust from uh, CCLP. Three. And I guess this is suction solution. Which is like the level before it in CCLP3, this key and door thing. I don't know, I'm just taking guesses. I don't really know. This ending section looks a lot like lemmings. I don't know if that's intentional or not. And that is it, guys. We have officially completed CCLP4. So, what did I think of this set? Um, well, so far, I will say, this is my favorite official set. Uh, I mean, I liked CCLP1, but this has more of a spread of difficulty, and I really appreciate that a lot. Don't get me wrong, I love uh, what CCLP1 accomplished, but I feel like this set is more to my gameplay style. You know, I do like having some easy levels, some harder levels. I, um, I do think it does err a little bit on the easy side, though, and... Um, this is something that I think was just a result of where the community, myself included, was at when we were constructing it and voting on it and everything. Um, it definitely feels more like a slightly harder version of CCLP1 than like a new, you know, set with like a new kind of, I don't know what to call it, feel, I guess. I mean, it feels a little bit different, but not to the degree that CCLP2 and CCLP3 felt different. And maybe that's fine, you know, but I kind of wish that, you know, the next CCLP for, for, the, for CC1 will take a while to create. And maybe I'm saying that now and I'll change my mind later, but I'm saying that because I feel like there's, there's still a lot to explore with CC1. Um, I feel like it kind of needs a break right now, and we need to move on to CCLP2 or CC2 and create levels for it, which a lot of people have, and make an official set for that. And 
I'm hoping that in some ways the two games will feed into each other. You know, like there will be a feedback loop where, you know, you can do some things in CC2, and if you get tired of that or overwhelmed by it, you can go to CC1. And then if you can exert enough energy designing levels for CC1, then, you know, you can go to CC2 and feel like, oh, man, I really want to do this in this set, in this game, but I didn't really have all the tools, but now I've got the tools, you know. Um, I, I just think that it has the potential to really play off each other very well, and I don't think one game needs to be in the spotlight more than the other, per se. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the um, the elements of CC2 even more than this game, but I appreciate the library of elements in this game and the rich history it holds, and I think I think both will continue to exist for a while, you know, as far as playing on the internet is concerned. I think this set, and this is partially my fault, because, you know, I was like, okay, let's do this, and so that way we will have more reason to focus on CC2, at the time I was saying it, I feel like it may have been produced a little too soon after CCLP1. And I, I kind of regret pushing that along because um, I was one of the people who was like, yes, let's make CCLP4. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily the worst thing. I, I kind of wish we just kind of let the the submitted sets bake for a little while longer, maybe accept a few more submissions. But... Uh, I feel like if we did that with CCLP5, we could end up with a killer set. And I'm hoping that one day when CCLP5 is made, I'm really hoping it will be a pretty difficult set. And I say that because I feel like CCLP3 tried that, and there's a lot of great levels in that set, but there was a few too many overwhelmingly mean levels. And uh, I, I think some of them can be good in small doses, but the amount that were there and just the fact that they were so close together really didn't do that set justice and I think if there was a set that had a similar level of difficulty but maybe with less unfair levels and more fun levels and maybe the difficulty curve was a little less ridiculous than or maybe a little less bunched up at the end I should say I think that could be really really nice so that's just my take on the future I um I have no intention of getting involved with the production of CCLP5. I'm just going to go and say that right now. I'm perfectly content to just play it. And I, I'm thinking, and this goes for CC2LP1 or whatever that set's going to be called, I'm heavily considering blind LPing uh, both of those sets when they release and not optimizing them right away. And uh, I wanted to talk about this because I, I've alluded to it, and I forget what l Let's Play I alluded to it in, but... Um, I know I've talked about this before. I may mention it in my next Let's Play, which I've already recorded. I feel like I've kind of done the optimization community a bit of a disservice because I've I've tried to uh, kind of solidify my uh, my records and whatnot by working on levels before voting for sets even starts, you know, and things like that. Like I did it for the other 100 tiles when that set was uh, released. And this is prior to CCLP4 voting. I mean, once voting started, I didn't touch any levels for optimization. Um, but, um, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, because... And a lot of people have reminded me, yeah, you have the time for that because you've optimized all the official sets. And, you know, my natural response is, well, you have the choice to <laughs> whether or not you want to optimize official sets or not. Which is true, but they're not wrong in that I do have like psychologically maybe more of a slight advantage just because, you know, I don't have the weight of, oh man, I'm missing all these times in the optimization world. So because of that, I've realized that, you know, cramming in a bunch of optimization at the launch of a set and, you know, marathoning 149 levels and two rule sets like I did with CCLP4 and um, to a degree CCLP1, it doesn't really encourage people to optimize. And I really want optimization to make a comeback. Because if I'm honest with myself, and I know I've mentioned this a lot, I really miss the dynamic of CCLP2. That was my favorite set in terms of just the way the community reacted. I mean, I think part of it was because it was the first set that was, you know, community voted and released and all that stuff. But, you know, for a lot of people who had existed after most of the records of CC1 were made, most of those bold times were made, most people were like, wow, a new set's coming. I finally have a chance to do this. And this is prior to 
you know, custom set scoreboards existing and things like that. So it was a lot more special back then to optimize another set. And I kind of want that to be the case again. I don't want one person to, you know, completely, you know, blitzkrieg through all the, the levels and, you know, set all these records at the very start and all that. I, I mainly did that because when CCLP3 was released, Pi Guy did that, and he managed to have completely destroy a lot of my records, and so I was like, I am never letting that happen again. So, therefore, I'm just going to be as re- proactive as possible. But I realized that that doesn't exactly create the healthiest dynamic in the community, so that's my reasoning for wanting to blind Let's Play the next official sets that come out. So, uh, you can probably be expecting that from me years down the road whenever that happens. But for now, I have now LP'd all the official sets. Um, I think I said that after LPing CCLP3, but I, I think I've LP'd all the official sets for the time being. I, I don't see another one being released for another at least two years. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. Thanks so much for watching. I really enjoyed this set a lot. I, uh, we didn't talk about favorite levels, have we? Uh, let's take a look. Uh, obviously, I love color coordination a lot. I really, really enjoy, um, oh, what was it, um, Undefined Fantastic Object. I know a lot of people don't like that one, but I really enjoyed it. Strandquist is a really cool variety level, though I'm a little less crazy about it than I initially was. I still really like combinations. Malachite's the key issue. I mean, there's so many of these levels. Lean thinking. And in terms of, like, oh, yeah, Puzzle Box... Yeah, so many good levels, especially in this middle area. I feel like that was a, a really nice decade, the 80s. Just like real life. Uh, really love Coral Reef. And anti-disruptive caves, key inside. Jeffrey had a lot of good levels in this set. Um, uh, in case in Carbonite was a good Andrew Menzies level. I mean, I, I haven't even mentioned half of these that I really enjoy. So, anyway... Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to the CCLP4 staff for sticking with this. And um, thank you for letting me back on at the very, very end uh, to help decide what was going to be in the final set. I feel like I didn't really contribute much to that, but I'm glad I could help in whatever way I could. So I will got, I'll see you guys in the next Let's Play, which will be The Walls of CCLP4.